poor, poor gits. And it's now 1,400 strong. So there's even more people out there to talk to and find out stuff about. But most of all, we're here today with you guys. And you've really made... Oh, we're swelling up. <laughs> you made a man's dream come true. We love you, Ross. <laughs> Get a room. Yeah, so... Here we are. Thank you for making a hobby a full-time job now. So, who wants to talk about the solar system and play with some inflatable planets? Yeah? yeah. Right, first of all, I need a volunteer to be the sun. Yeah. I know Archie asked. He asked about four weeks ago. So go on in, grab the sun. You can guess which one it is. It's the huge, big yellow one. Right, so, as you can see today, or you could if it wasn't cloudy, if it's dark, it doesn't have to be to see stars. We have a massive star right there. It's, just, it's almost the same as all the others apart from its age. It's really just a giant molecular reactor sitting there pumping out heat for us, keeping us alive. It's actually 98% the mass of the whole solar system. So only 2% is the rest of the planet. So that's how ginormous it is and big. With a solar filter, which I've got on my scope over the back there, you can see black sunspots. And if you can see them, they're actually about the size of Earth. So when you see one, you'll be able to think, that's the size of Earth, and that's just a spot on the sun. You also get flares. You need a special scope to see that. It's called a hydrogen alpha, and it costs about £1,000, which is why I haven't got one. But with that, you can see the flares coming all around the outside of it. So it's really great to see. So who knows what the first planet is? Mercury. Come on in. Come and grab Mercury. That's your one. Stand in line. Try not to fall over. Right, Mercury's the closest planet. It actually goes around the sun in 88 days, so it goes around really quickly. It does have a kind of funny orbit. If this is the sun, it kind of goes away and then comes back close and then away and kind of goes around like that, almost like a spirograph. So that's how it moves, so it's slightly odd. They did used to believe that a planet, it's one for you, Dan, called Vulcan, it's a Star Trek fan, used to be, they thought a planet called Vulcan was in between the Sun and Mercury, which is what gave it its erratic orbit. But we've since found that there's nothing there, unfortunately for Spock. So it's really hard to see because it's so close. So to see it, you have to really wait until the Sun sets or the Sun rises. So it's just before or after. And you have to wait until it's at its furthest. So for a sec. So as it's going around the Sun, when it gets to its furthest western, that's when you can see it. The Sun will set and you can see it through the scope. And then also, it's eastern as well. So that's why it's before or after. Okay. It's really a small, rocky, cratered sort of looking moon. It's one of the heaviest cratered planets there. And it actually, it had a transit this year. I've got some pictures on the uh, screen that I can show you. But when you see it go across there with the filters that we've got over there, you literally just see a tiny black dot. And it's smaller than some of the sunspots, so that's how small Mercury actually is. It did have a large impact. Something flew down, smashed the top of it, and the impact of it actually shot all the way through and raised the other side. So something hard hit that, and we've seen that through the spaceships that have gone there. Right, you'd think it would be the hottest planet being closest to the sun, but it's not. That goes to our next planet. What is it? Venus! Yeah, come on in, you're Venus. <laughs> no, that's that's yeah, you're the hottest planet. <clears throat> so next to Mercury. Next to Mercury. Mercury. Right, Venus is funny. It actually spins the opposite way to all the other planets. So if they all go clockwise, it's going anti-clockwise. And they reckon it too had an impact in its early life to make it spin the other way. The reason it's so hot is because of most of its atmosphere is CO2 and it's really thick. So the sun gets in, but can't get back out. So it's like a greenhouse. So this makes it hotter and hotter and hotter. It's actually 464 degrees Celsius, or gas mark 16. Which I don't think your ovens go up to, do they? <laughs> right, when you're looking at it for a scope, it's one of the brightest ones in the sky. It was actually called the goddess of beauty, because you could see it so bright in the sky, and it really is great when it's up. You can see phases as well, as you can with Mercury, even though it's harder to. It's like the moon. Because it's inside Earth's orbit, you can see its phases through the telescope, so it gives you something to look at. Right, what's the next planet? Earth. Earth. What's special about Earth? We live on it. We live on it, yep. So there's life. We've got life, haven't we? No other planet's got life. 
I was hoping you'd get that one. <laughs> so we've got life, but with life you need liquid water. So it's also one of the only planets with liquid water on its surface. What else have we got that goes around Earth? You can't answer, you've already got one. What goes around Earth? The moon. Who's going to be the moon? The moon. The moon. The moon. The moon. <laughs> Brilliant. You're the moon. Hello, moon. Kids might have to hold two each. Right, it's going to be adults next. Look out, I'm going to choose. Right, the moon, you see how large it is to Earth? It's not actually to scale, but it is quite large. The reason it's that big, it's one of the biggest ones compared to the size of planet in our solar system. Do you want to go around? Can you go around here? Keep running around until I finish talking. <laughs> We're out. Hermione, you've got to spin the wrong way. So the moon was actually created when a Mars-sized body, so another planet, crashed into Earth. So Earth crashed with another planet... And it threw a disc of debris around Earth. So Earth actually had like a donut shaped ring of ra- like debris around it. So it actually had rings at one point. Then it all clumped together to form our moon. The reason we know this is because when we landed there, they found minerals and vitamins and things like that that are all the same as are on Earth. So they put it together. What else do we have? When you look at the moon for a scope, it is amazing. You can't. It's, it's better than all the planets, I have to say, because you've got uh, you've got mountain ranges on there. You've got craters. You've also got you know the shadow that goes across. It's called the Terminator. It's not a killer robot. It's just a shadow that goes across. And when that goes onto a crater, it literally casts a shadow across it, so it brings it out like 3D, and it really is fantastic to see. So, what's the next planet? You can't speak. Go on, I need an adult. Come on, someone. Anyone know? Yeah? Mars. 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 Who's being Mars? Mars? I'll be Mars. I'm going to start delegating. Right. Do you want to stand there? You're next, though. Yeah, right, we've got Mars. Now, Mars, we all know Mars because it's one of the most explored planets in our solar system. It actually has a humongous canyon down the middle of it which is at, it's, it's about half the planet is there. You can't actually see it for a scope. Well, I can't because mine's too small. But it also has the largest volcano called Mons Olympus. And you can actually see that from space. It almost comes out of the planet because it's that big. Volcano. It's the most explored. We've got, we've got spaceships, we've got robots on there, rovers all going around testing for water because they think there might have been life or water on Mars at some point. And they have now actually found water. With a scope... At the moment, you're quite close to Mars in our orbit, so you can actually see its poles, you can see the ice poles, you can also see the dark and light plains and rocky areas. But sometimes you get a dust storm that will cover half the planet, as you've probably seen in the Martian or something like that, so you won't actually be able to see much of the detail on it. Now, there's something between Mars and the next planet, and it's an asteroid belt. The asteroid belt was actually meant to be a rocky planet, but it never actually clumped together. So we would have had another planet there, but not enough gravity clumped it together. So we've now got a field of lots of small, sort of rocky bodies. I think they found about 200,000 there, but they predict a billion. Now, the great thing about it is if you find one with your telescope, you get to name it. So out of 200,000, there's a billion out there. So you guys need to go out there and find them. Then you can name them, call them Archie. Have you named any? Me? No, I've not found any asteroids yet. Oh. Not yet. I'm still trying to find planets. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if you find it, you can name it. So get hunting. Now, unfortunately, have you seen Star Wars? Yeah. Yeah, it's not I like Star Wars. That. Unfortunately, you don't fly around, they're smashing together. If you see one, you're probably not going to be able to see the nearest one. That's how spaced out they can be. So, sorry to blow your dreams there. So what's the next planet? It's a big one. Jupiter. Who's that? Do you want it? Go on. I'll go up for him. I won't throw it. So I'll put that down. All right. I'm going to need four more. Jupiter. Right, Jupiter, as you can see, is the biggest planet. You've got the right way to see the spot. You'll notice... One big feature is its red spot. Oh, yeah. yeah. Its red spot used to be the size of three Earths. 
It's now reducing. It's only down to one earth now. So you've got to get out and see it before it disappears because it's actually a storm that's disappearing now. It spins so fast for how big it is. Sorry, is that giving feedback? It takes 10 hours to do a full orbit. But it spins so fast that it actually bulges, so it squishes down, and the equator is pushed out. So it's got a slight squish to it, so it's not actually circular. It has 64 moons. So there are 64 bodies all flying around there, but most of them are actually trapped asteroids that have been pulled in by its immense gravity, and they actually call it the saviour of Earth, because they reckon that a lot of them might have hit us, and we may never have been. But Jupiter caught them all and has pretty much saved us. So we've got like a, a guardian angel looking over us, made of gas. So it's more like a sun, they say. They reckon that it was actually a failed sun. It could have been a sun if it had got enough mass to ignite, but it never did. So you're looking at almost like a baby sun that could have been. For a scope, fantastic. You can pretty much see what you're looking at here. You can see the red spot. You can see the gas bands going along. You can also see its four main moons, which are a real feature. They're like diagonal, and you can see them moving around nightly, actually going around. And sometimes they transit, and you can see a shadow on the planet. So what's the next planet? Saturn, my name. Saturn. All right, someone's got to hold Saturn. Daddy, Daddy. Go, you got Saturn. Awesome. Right, Saturn. Saturn is always a crowd pleaser. Really Sorry, I'm putting it back to you. It. When you see Saturn, for some reason, everyone always says, wow. I don't know why, just wow comes out. I think it's because of all its rings. The thing is with the rings, they look spectacular when you look at them, but really, they're just dirty water ice crystals. So it's just dirty water that's been frozen, all floating around. Uh, it spins around pretty much the same as Jupiter, about 10, 11 hours but it's less dense, it's a lot less dense. In fact, it's less dense than Earth. It's only about 95% the mass of Earth. And they say that if you can find a bath big enough, it will actually float in the water. So it's actually that buoyant as a planet. Right now, it's kind of tipped towards us. So you can see the rings quite well if you look through. And tonight, you'll see that Saturn will come up just over there, then Mars, and then Jupiter's just going back down over that way. So if it's clear, we can see those three planets tonight. There's a slight gap in between the rings, and it's called the Cassini Division. And that's pretty much, it was named after the spaceship that went there and took loads of fantastic pictures that we can see now. It also has a large number of moons at 62. So it hasn't quite beat Jupiter, but we're getting there. Right, on to uh, the planet that always causes a chuckle. You know, I want to go for it. <laughs> Go on, say it. Yeah, we like to say Uranus as astronomers now, because every time we say the other one, we don't laugh. You don't see it, are you? I've got blue planets in my, on my ceiling. Yeah. And they have names. Right, I'll hold this, because no one else has got the bottle. Right, Uranus or Uranus. Don't laugh. It's a funny planet as well. You remember Venus goes the other way? Uranus actually rolls. So it's like a football. It rolls around the solar system. Round and round. They reckon it had a collision as well. Apparently, as all the planets were being born, there was lots of collisions and things going on. It was the first planet discovered for a telescope. All the rest can be seen with the naked eye. But from there onwards, you can't really see it at all. So it's the first one discovered by a telescope. It has a 21-year summer and a 21-year winter. Now, unfortunately, it's not much of a summer because it is minus 200 degrees Celsius. So... It's a bit like ours, really. For a scope, you will just see kind of a pale blue dot. So it's not very exciting. Next planet? Neptune. 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 Oh, it's squished. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's do Neptune. Come on, mate. He's your one. He's going to be talking about Neptune later for you. Right, there. right Neptune is the last planet, apparently. So it's got 165 years to go around. So actually, when it was discovered, I think it was like 1854 or something like that, it's only done one orbit in the time that it's been discovered. So we still don't really know that much about it. We do know that it is the windiest planet of all of them. The winds are at 1,340 miles an hour. So good luck hanging on to that. 
It also has a dark blue dot, which not many people know about.